Last week, the Nigerian Downstream and Midstream Regulatory Petroleum Authority alleged that the Dangote refinery is still at the pre-commissioning stage and has not been licensed. The chief executive officer of the regulatory body, Farouk Ahmed, while speaking with journalists in Port Harcourt, also claimed that the Dangote refinery only produces between 650 to 1,200 parts per million, and so their quality is much more inferior to imported quality. Well, on Saturday, the chairman of the Dangote refinery, Aliko Dangote, refuted claims that the petroleum products from his refinery are substandard. Dangote made the remarks when members of the House of Representatives, led by the Speaker of the House, Tajudin Abbas, visited the refinery in Lagos. Dangote said the regulatory agency accredited and approved the Dangote refinery laboratory in March 2024. A credibility analysis at the refinery's laboratory to access the quality of the diesel product revealed that the diesel sample, commonly known as AGO, measured 87.6 parts per million, contrary to the claims made by the regulatory authority. Tajdin Abbas highlighted the need to investigate the contradictions. President, I'm surprised. I'm surprised that um, the regulatory agency has uh, certified that what you are doing is uh, acceptable and uh, it has met all the requirements. And uh, based on what you said and what we have heard in the media, that NMPC is not happy with the quality of your product. So I don't know how we have these contradictory positions of true players all representing the public and the private sector. Uh, so I think it is something that we need to and uh, we're going to investigate further to find out whether um, there are ulterior motives or they are all um, stating their opinions professionally and objectively. Yes. But the most important, Your Excellency, is to know that the imported one they are encouraging uh, has failed in test. But in certificates, when you check, definitely, you know, it will show the decision because those people who have the love they've been asked what to write. But the best way to get is to go to filling stations and you buy. When you go to filling stations, you buy, nobody can hide anything. And that is exactly what we did this morning on our way here, which was suggested uh, it by yourself, your actions that and uh, one two was taken from both the chairman of uh, downstream and also midstream, and they brought the sample here. You can see that we are now at it, that is direct, so that we don't go and now give a different sample. It was taken directly from production. It's 87 ppm. If you are saying that, yes, how can Dangote alone supply the market? Okay, are you saying that the $4 billion that NNPC spent now on the activation of their own refinery, uh, refineries, Kaduna, Wari, and Patakot, is that money down the drain? Are the refineries not going to work? They have announced a date. So if they are there, we cannot be a monopoly because we are not the only ones. Actually, they are more powerful than us. So there's no way we can actually even be a monopoly. It's not done. I have seen also in the quality that they are talking about. Yes, you know, when, you, when we started, uh, we started with about six, 700 uh, ppm, which is true. Uh, that is why we started, because, you know, it was a new plant. We have not commissioned most of them. So by the time that we finish, now we have commissioned part of it. So I'm actually surprised for somebody to come and mention that, yes, we have uh, a bad quality. We and uh, the other modular refineries. I can't talk about the quality of the modular refineries, but our own today, like what I said, our own production, you have seen, we have tested it, is 87 ppm. And by the time you come, even on Monday, we'll be at 50. By beginning of August, end of this month, beginning of August, we'll be at 10 ppm. Okay? Our flashpoint, You've seen the tests that we have run, and uh, Your Excellency, Sir, Honorable Speaker, Deputy Honorable, uh, Deputy Honorable Speaker, the leadership of the House, 
I want you to even at any time set up a committee that they will come with every representatives headed by your chosen honorable member to come and lead in taking samples from filling stations. Because I must tell you today that all the test certificates that people are busy, you know, floating around, where are the labs? Even if they have the labs, I can tell you they are fake certificates. The real one that you now know that they are right is to take from the filling station and also to come and take also from our production line. Now you will be able to tell Nigerians that this is it. But you know, the, the marketing of a company by a regulator that he's supposed to protect is very, very unfortunate. You know, I mean, uh, uh, it's good that we didn't even know that you are going to ask us to stop by the road and pick up diesel. And uh, you know, we didn't know what you wanted to do. And when we got here, I said, okay, fine, let them go and you know, take sample. And the chairman downstream of the house and the chairman midstream of the house went to the people to pick up a hot sample. They brought, you've tested, and you've seen where we are. So we want to clear that, yes, we produce the best diesel in Nigeria. And if, <clears throat> if the regulator wants, he can come 24 hours anytime. He has people here. Let him conduct this. And I would like to also uh, the media to show our lab. And I want them to also, also show the lab of the regulator himself. He should show us which lab is he using. Yes, because, you know, as a regulator, he's supposed to have a lab. If a regulator doesn't have a lab, then we have an issue. You know, he cannot rely on somebody. He's supposed to, you know, check us. Well, to shed more light on this matter, we're now being joined by uh, economist Kevin Emanuel, who had an ex formerly known as Twitter addressed what he considers misrepresentations about the Dangote refinery, including issues on certification and actual production capacity. Well, good morning, Emmanuel. Thank you very much for joining us on The Morning good Show. Morning. I was hoping that you good listened to... Um, good morning, OJ. Thank you. I was hoping that you listened to the president of the Dangote yeah. group there, Aliko Dangote, refuting claims made by the regulatory body. They had claimed that, you know, the Dangote refinery is still at the pre-commissioning stage and that it's not being licensed at the point. But also, uh, yesterday, Dangote said that the refinery is fully ready and that in August, all the array of products except for petrochemicals will be available. And now, can you help us understand how this works? Looking at your tweet yesterday, you said that commercial uh, refineries undergo seven stages of pre-commissioning. So please walk us through what, uh, you know, the process is to get uh, certified. Oji, thank you so much for having me and very good morning to you and everyone um, this morning. I, I, I don't want to bore you with too much technical details, but before I start talking about pre-commissioning stages and the technical capability tests that the NMDPRA as the regulator midstream um, and downstream does for a commercial refinery of that size and it does for 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, 120 days, 180 days, 270 and then 360. At the end of six months it gives you a provisional acceptance certificate and then at the end of 12 months it gives you a final acceptance certificate. Um, let me say that I am actually surprised that the NMDPRA chief still has a job. And I'll tell you why I said that. In February 2022, petrol was imported into Nigeria. Alaji Aliko Dangote said that uh, the regulator does not have his own lab that um, aligns with internal and third party rubbing roundtable tests for um, motor octane number, research octane number distillation level, sulfur content that tests for ash, and for density. And it, it's, it's a shame because in 2022, petrol was actually imported into Nigeria that has such low research and motor octane level that it hit what they call the anti-knocking ratio. So many people's car engines were damaged, generator engines were damaged. There was no recompense. There was no investigation. The National Assembly did not call the regulator and ask them, they did not investigate facts. Um, so the question is, Nigeria has been importing petrol and diesel and other petroleum products since 1972. 
for 52 years. Nigeria had a refinery, refineries that had installed capacity of 210,000 barrels of crude oil processing per year. The last was completed in 1989 by Br British Petroleum and Shell. It's currently not operational. And in the last 20-something years, the government has spent 12 trillion in turnaround maintenance and is still dead. And in my opinion, I don't think those refineries should um, be relied on, by the way. You know? So if, for example, a, 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 an entrepreneur takes on the challenge of investing north of $20 billion to build a refinery, the government should support him. Now, let, let me come back. Refineries go through seven stages of pre-commissioning pre because um, you have to test every single thing in the refinery. Now, for example, the reason why when they started refining diesel, the level of parts per million was anywhere around 650 to 1002, was because what they call the crude oil distillation unit and the hydro treater is not currently in operation. There are different stages of the refineries that has to go through tests. That's why you have an MDPR officials there at the Dangote refinery for the first 12 months. The officials are there to go through with um, the staffs of the refinery and the engineers to test every single part of it and ensure that they are working properly. You know, so the fact that the hydro treater um, does not come on, it means that they have to start refining from what they call um, lower or heavier distillates, like um, non-transportation fuels. Uh, you have your base oil, you have your petroleum coke that is used for making aluminum, um, you have your uh, petrochemical feedstock, you have your bitumen binders. Um, th uh, those are your heavy distillates. And then you come to your middle distillates. And then you come to your higher distillates, right? And that's the reason why PMS is going to be one of the last um, set of derivatives of the nine that um, will come into um, effect uh, at the refinery. So I, I, I don't get the fuse. And I was a bit um, disappointed that the NMDPRA chief will say that um, Dangote wants to stop um, companies from importing um, petrol and diesel into Nigeria. Are we not supposed to stop importing petrol and diesel? Every month, Nigeria spends 2.4 billion US dollars to form its energy basket. Nine products, um, Jet A1, Automotive Gasoline Oil, AGO, um, Premium Motor Spirit, um, PMS, um, um, Kerosene, Lubricants, Bitumen Binders. Nine of them consume $2.4 billion a month. So in a year, you spend north of anywhere around $26 billion importing petroleum products. If you have a refinery that has been built and can fully backwardly integrators and at full capacity utilization, we'll do 49.4 million liters of PMS on a daily basis. We'll do about 26 million liters of diesel on a daily basis. We'll do about 12 million liters of Jet A1 on a daily basis, about 1.1 million liters of kerosene on a daily basis, about 2.1 million liters of base oil that is used to produce lubricants that we use for our engines and all kinds of stuff. Why is the government not happy to supply Dangote with feedstock? All right, Kevin, uh, thanks for setting the tone for this conversation. But I'd like you to, uh, to take it a notch further. I, I like the way that you started in terms of uh, the requirements uh, for, certif for certification. Yes, you do not want to bore us with technicalities, but it will be important to break it down uh, so that uh, people who are watching will understand uh, what is actually going on, uh, given that this is a project that the Nigerian government, through the NMPC, you know, was meant to um, own a stake, paid some money, was meant to balance up. Uh, but then it looks like things are falling apart. Does this have to do uh, with the deal with the federal government through the NMPC uh, that seems to be in jeopardy, you know, from 20% ownership now down to 7.9%, uh, according to Dangote himself? Uh, is what Farouk uh, Ahmed is saying is it coming on the basis of that failed, uh, shall we say, transaction? Uh, in essence, does it mean that, do you think that the Dangote refinery constitutes a threat to vested interest? I, I will say that um, the Dangote refinery is going to wipe off the importation business because um, the Americans... Society for Testing and Materials, a ASTM. Now, you have different kinds of tests in the, in the uh, midstream sector for refineries. You have um, European Standards, EN228. You have um, ASTM, um, um, D4814. You have um, Colonial Tests. 
Um, you have the Environmental Protection Agency test in America, then you have the American Petroleum Institute test. All these are standard tests that test for research octane number, motor octane number, it tests for distillation, for sulfur content, and for density. Now, you can see that the test that has been done at the lab of the Dangote refinery produce um, diesel, his diesel at 87.6 parts per million. The test that was done for total energies downstream and metrics energy produced um, total produced about 1,827 parts per million diesel for imported diesel into Nigeria. And metrics energy produced about 2,254 parts per million for imported diesel into Nigeria. Okay? So, his diesel is way, way, way better than what is imported into Nigeria. And if the National Assembly wants to go a step further, National Assembly can recruit SGS. SGS is one of the most um, reputable tests, um, gasoline testing firm in the world. Rep recruit SGS and also recruit PwC or KPMG to come and do an audit of the third party Robin Roundtable certification process for, the, for, the, for, the, for, for AGO and um, gasoline. Um, now, let's go back. In 2022, June 2022, um, NNPC went to Afro-Exim to do what they call reserve-based lending, and they set up an SPV called Lekki Refinery PLC, and they borrowed a billion dollars, and it staked um, crude oil in four sale agreements, and it used that cash that was generated to invest in Dangote Refinery. Now, in that share purchase agreement, there was a specific timeline within which they were supposed to you know, pay the balance of that 20%, which was the total was $22.7 billion valuation for 20% stake in the refinery, Dangote Oil Refining Company. Now, that SP was um, precedent on the refinery kicking off. It kicked off, they needed feedstock, NNPC did not pay up the feedstock. The feedstock of $1.7 billion in today's market translates to about um, 20.7 million barrels of crude oil. Now, why did NNPC not, uh, why are they not able to pay up the feedstock? Between 2019 and 2024, NNPC has borrowed $12 billion through Afro-Exim, and they've staked about 250 million barrels of crude oil as collateral in reserve-based lending for that loan. The most recent of which was Project Gazelle, which was widely criticized, you know, and where they exchanged 55,000 barrels of crude oil per day for $3.4 billion dollars at about 11.85% interest, 6% so free, and then 5.85% country risk premium. You know? And they're having to pay about 55,000 barrels of that at a strike price of $57 per barrel. You know? NNPC cannot provide feedstock because before Dangote, they've been doing crude oil um, direct sale, direct purchase, where they exchange crude oil to companies who are appointed by NNPCL, um, including Duke Oil, um, that is now NNPC trading, in exchange for PMS. And considering that PMS is only 43% derivative when you refine a barrel of crude oil, you know, NNPC cannot pay Dangote the $1.7 billion because under the domestic crude oil supply obligations, crude oil is actually um, allocated at a discount, an official price that is a 27% discount to the open market rate. So these are the questions the National Assembly and the President needs to ask the NNPCL. Why were you unable, uh, uh, not able to pay $1.7 billion in feed stock to complete the acquisition of 20% that will make you a, a, a own fifth of the largest refinery um, in Africa and um, arguably the world, and that has the potential to produce north of $28 billion in revenue on a yearly basis. These are the questions that need to be asked. This is the reason why um, when they reneged on the clauses of that share purchase agreement, the board of Dangote had, had to you know, prevail to say that, okay, we're going to scale down your shares to the cash contribution you've paid for your equity to 7.2%. Okay, thank you very much. Now, I want to ask you, because you said earlier that you were surprised that the boss of the, um, of the regulatory authority still has a job. But I want to ask specifically about the sulfur levels that we're talking about here and, and also the importance of the, the levels of sulfur in these um, derivative, derivative products. So, you know, Mr. Dangote, the head of Dangote Refinery, did come out and say that his... PPM measurement is now at 32, that he expects it to go even lower. But he's also said that they have tested products from other, like from Total Station, from other stations, 
and that these levels are actually exceeding the levels that we should see in the market. He even ask the regulators to come and test his and to test what they're seeing on the market. But I want to know, what is the issue here with the sulfur levels, with the parts per million, with the flashpoint? And also, what is the importance of it for Nigerians? Are we supposed to believe that some of the diesel or petrol products entering our vehicles or our cars or machinery could actually be more harmful than we believe they are both to ourselves and to the environment? Well, uh, um, I, and this is very important. And the reason why it's important is because if, if the president wants to fight climate change and then um, cap um, carbon emissions and carbon control, the president needs to pay attention to the sulfur and the octane level of um, the PMS and AGO that is imported into Nigeria. You know, um, like I said earlier, the total energy is downstream. Um, diesel that is brought into Nigeria, test shows that it's at 1,800 and 27 parts per million. Uh, Matrix is above 2,200 parts per million. Dangote is currently at 87.6. So basically, the sulfur content talks about the ash, the ash that um, is generated. And that's what determines whether when, you, uh, when the fuel to air uh, combustion stroke and compression stroke in your engine is generated, as you move your vehicle, the smoke that comes out of your exhaust is white or black. You know. And this is the reason why high-performance um, 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 combustion engines, cars in Nigeria, don't survive for very long because of the level of um, octane, which is very poor, and because of the level of um, sulfur, which is very high. And th this is something Nigerians don't know. And, and it, it, okay, I'll, I'll give you an example. In, in Potako, the, the rivers people complain a lot about black soot, and that black soot is basically because. Um, a lot of those illegal refineries and shanties in river states that uh, where people refine the crude oil into AGO and kerosene and um, petrol that burns faster. They don't have chambers. They don't have a um, crude oil distillation unit. They don't have hydro treater that is able to treat and refine these products into globally accepted certified standards, right? And that's why you see a lot of suits, a lot of ash go into the atmosphere and there's a lot of contamination. And it's some, some, at to some point, these, these things are carcinogenic, you know? It also talks about the, the level of purity in the air. And it's also a reason why I tell people, when you're outside Nigeria, the air is purer and it's cleaner. And when you take pictures, the pictures are clearer. Because the level of carbon emission that comes from you having high sulfur content and low octane level for the PMS and AGO that is imported into Nigeria, that the regulator has failed to test because he doesn't have his own laboratory and he doesn't employ ex experts to test at the ports before they are put into storage depot and storage tanks and transported to different parts of Nigeria, it, 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 it has, 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 has um, um, impact on our environment. You have highlighted a lot of points, which I think a lot of Nigerians will take. The fact that the regulatory authority has no laboratory to test these levels. I mean, you have, you know, alluded to the fact that the reason why vehicles are not lasting very long is because of the level of octane and sulfur. And like you rightly said, Dangote had accused, you know, these regulatory bodies of not passing these imported uh, products. He says that they have failed, like you said. But I wanted to ask you about sabotage because back in June, Dangote had accused or even, you know, had suggested that the IOCs are refusing to supply his refinery with uh, a crude and the CEO of the Nigerian Upstream uh, Petroleum Regulatory Commission, Benga Komolafe, had described the claim as erroneous. Would you, would you describe this as sabotage at this point? Because it does appear that if the regulatory body is passing these imported crude as you know safe and they have no laboratory what actually is really going on well um I, I do not agree that the iocs are to blame for the situation um, with the lack of feedstock i think the blame points directly to NM NUPRC and um, nnpcl and the fact that a lot of nigeria's crude oil has been negotiated in crude oil swap agreements for DSDP, now PPTA, or for sale agreement for reserve bank loans that has been taken. And then domestic crude oil supply obligations to refineries that, in my opinion, are not in existence. 
you know. But if, if, when, when you talk about this and you talk about upstream and you talk about the fact that the last time there was final investment decision for any deep offshore project in Nigeria was in 2014. And the recount in Nigeria is currently at 34, which is very low. And the fact that um, when you look at the sharing formula for production sharing contract or for joint venture agreement or registered joint venture agreements, um, deep offshore where the IOCs are comfortable playing these days, you see Total last week sold the shares in um, its onshore business to Chapal Energies for 860 million US dollars. Um, the IOCs actually have what they call cost oil. They are 40%. Okay? So if the IOCs pay their royalty and tax oil to NNPC and they fulfill their domestic crude oil supply obligations in line with sections 109 of the PIA and as released by the Gazette of the NUPRC, the NUPRC, the, the IOCs do not owe Dangote Refinery a right of first refusal for its feedstock because every crude oil they get in Nigeria, less, less all the encumbrances and commitments they have based on the regulatory frameworks that are established, actually is um, exported in for sale agreements that they already have with clients signed years ahead. And they also have, some of these companies have refineries. Shell has a refinery, ExxonMobil has a refinery. You know, so if they're not taking it, they're selling it through brokers to third parties. So it's normal for there to be a 2 to 4 or $5 um, commission spread for the brokers who trade. And this is not something that started last month or one year ago. It's something that has been in, in existence in the industry for, for, for a very long time. So I think we need to situate the blame where it belongs. And the blame belongs solely on the shoulders of NMPCL and NUPRC, not, not the IOCs. All right. All right, Kevin. Um, let, let me... Um, make this a combo. Uh, first is to um, ask what your thoughts are regarding what actually looks like um, a demarketing of a major project, uh, possibly the biggest you know, single investment in Nigeria by an individual in recent times. And it looks to me like uh, uh, what the regulator, the head of the regulator is saying, you know, amounts to demarketing. What are your views as to how this might affect, you know, FDIs, given the fact that the plank uh, that this current administration is resting on uh, is to get as much uh, FDIs as possible. Um, the second part will be um, to play the devil's advocate for the regulator. Uh, and therefore, to say that the questions that Farouk Ahmed is asking, are they legitimate questions, you know, presented uh, in the wrong way, but are they legitimate for Dangote Refinery Management to answer so that there can be full disclosure and there can be assurance to the Nigerian populace who are waiting eagerly, you know, to see uh, uh, for the refinery to go full throttle? So you can imagine uh, the NNPCL, the international media is reporting that the NNPCL defaulted in a share purchase agreement to supply $1.7 billion worth of feedstock to Dangote that is signed in 2022. And the NNPCL did not think it wise to update the, the, the public, um, being that it's their commonwealth, you know, that, look, we're unable to pay the feedstock. And why are you unable to pay the feedstock? And we lost out on 12.8% um, shareholding of Dangote Refiner, which is the single largest investment um, in, in Nigeria currently. And you can imagine the signal that sends, and the fact that the state-owned enterprise, the state oil company, um, is unable to meet up with its commitment. It's a very negative signal. And you can imagine that the NMDPRA chief will go further and say something like, um, Dangote wants us to give him um, the complete market why would somebody invest $20 billion if he doesn't want to capture the market? When Boa comes, Boa is attempting to build the 250,000 barrel capacity in Aquibom. When he comes, maybe in five or seven years' time, he's going to compete with Dangote. So it's only fair and it's reasonable. I think a lot of Nigerians are behind Dangote refinery, uh, refinery in the view that we should stop importing substandard diesel, substandard PMS. And you can see, if... if if the government or the public or any observer or stakeholder is doubting the test that was done at Dangote's laboratory in Ekwe, in Leki, let them employ SGS and also employ an auditing firm to the third-party robbing roll table to test for research octane number, 
motor octane number to test for sulfur content, to test for density, and to test for distillation levels. Let us see which one comes out better. The one that comes out better will determine if the, if the, if the government will make a decision to hand over the market to him because he deserves it. He has earned it. He has been at it for seven or eight years. In 2007, by the way, Aliko formed a consortium called Blue Star to acquire Kaduna Refinery, and it was rejected. And that was the premise on which he started building this refinery, which is the most ambitious project Nigeria has seen until date. So it should be encouraged because it's a signal to international investors, especially at the time when the government is trying to cut non-speculative foreign direct investors to bring in the institutional capital into Nigeria. On the other hand, about the claims of the chief of the NMDPRA, you know, I don't think the claims are in order. The claims where he said that the level of um, sulfur content in his um, diesel is worse than what is being imported. Results show that that is not true. And like I said earlier, I've said it twice, I'm challenging the government to employ a, an independent um, 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 gasoline testing agency and also bring auditors, third-party auditors to a third-party rubbing round table to do tests on samples taken from Dangote refinery and the ones imported into Nigeria currently as storage depots. I don't think he has a claim. Okay. Now, sorry, Mr. Emmanuel, I want to follow up here, and I, I really do want to follow up on the question that was just raised, particularly about the dangers of a mon monopoly. Now, the reason why governments prevent monopolies from thriving in economies is to protect the consumers, to protect the customers, actually to protect the end user, which is the Nigerian people. Now, you're saying that it is his right. I'm, I, I want you to clarify there. Do you believe that it is um, Dangote's right to monopolize monopolize the industry or are you saying that regardless of his intentions or regardless of where the current space is right now he has no competitors and therefore it is a natural monopoly but you know if, if a regulator does come out and say they want to pro protect consumers from a monopoly is that in, a, in and of itself is that a bad thing I, I'll tell you what Saudi Aramco owns a refinery in, um, in Texas, the United States, that has um, a daily production capacity, I think, refining capacity of anywhere around 400, 450,000 barrels per day, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I, I don't see the argument for a monopoly. And, and the reason is because, especially now that Dangote has, is having to import crude oil from the US and now he's going to import 11 million barrels from Petrobras in Brazil, um, he says that he's going to eat 550,000 barrels capacity utilization by September. Um, I, I think it pays him better to actually import crude oil, refine his crude oil, and export it and sell in US dollar. He's going to make more money than to supply the Nigerian markets. Because if he has to supply the Nigerian markets and his unit cost per production is close to the current regulated price the government has set for these products, he's going to have to do a trade-off on having to do a net of and getting subsidy from the government, which, which, which doesn't make any sense for any businessman. So it pays him better to actually import crude oil, refine, and export his product back to off-takers. And you can see that they're already off-takers. I, I think he's been exporting urea to the US since 2021. Yeah? So I, I, don't, I don't see the whole talk about um, monopoly because he's the one that had the audacity to raise $20 billion to invest in the refinery, which is a very daring project and the single largest private sector investment we've had in Nigeria since independence. Nobody has done it. NMPC was unable to do it. Um, NMPC has spent 12 trillion naira over the last um, um, 20 years plus trying to get uh, four dead refineries back to operations and till today is still promising next week next month, next quarter, next year, and he's not been able to achieve it. Mm. You know? So I, I, don't, I don't see the talk about monopoly. Boa wants to come into play. The government should encourage Boa to come into play to build, commission, and compete with Dangote. Refineries are not um, $100 million investments or $50 million investments. Uh, they are huge capital projects. He had to dredge. Yeah? He had to create a port to dock what he brought in. He had to build roads. He had to build a power plant about 435 megawatts. Uh, you had to install industrial generators to build that plant and connect shell um, um, gas and um, feed or mescravos to be able to power that um, plant. Yeah, it is going through a lot to get to where it is. So I, I, I think he should be encouraged. I think he should be designated as a critical national infrastructure and encouraged because the amount of FX is going to save Nigeria and the amount of FX is going to supply to the market is going to also help our macroeconomic stability. 
And you can see that currently, the Central Bank of Nigeria currently has a net foreign exchange um, reserve position of anywhere less than $4 billion US dollars. The gross that CBN keeps announcing is gross, is encumbered. The gross of the $3 billion is encumbered. Yeah, that is not the true position of our foreign and uh, net foreign exchange um, and reserves. Uh, net foreign exchange reserves are low. So you need Dangote to sell and export these products, to be able to supply to the autonomous um, foreign exchange markets and, and, and provide stability to the foreign exchange markets. All right, Kevin, as we begin to wrap up, I just wanted to clarify that, you know, uh, the president of Dangote Group, Aliko Dangote, had, you know, refuted that uh, claim um, about monopoly yesterday when he met with the um, House of Representative members. And, you know, he said, you know, NNPC had said that by August, their refineries will be working. So he's never, you know, tried to monopolize this market because he knows that the NNPC also will be back in the market. Um, we'll be back in August. Guess what, guess what they claim? That the Port Harcourt refinery will be, back, uh, will be back up and running. But before I let you go, I wanted to point out about, you know, still on the levels of sulfur, uh, under the ECOWAS regulations, uh, the proposed limit for the imported diesel is uh, 50 ppm, correct? And then while for locally um, produced diesel from refineries within the ECOWAS uh, region, the limit is set at 200. Uh, PPM. As we read yesterday, Dangote said that his um, levels are about uh, 87 now at 36 PPM. So is it safe to say that the diesel from the Dangote refinery uh, meets the standard? Oji, it's, it's a very ironical question because historically since 1972 that we've been importing petroleum products, there is no single time in which the petroleum products imported into Nigeria for diesel, for the PPM, I'm sorry, for the sulfur content and the octane level has met up with the ECOWAS framework that is set. This is the first time we're having an entrepreneur build a refinery that is bringing us close to having products that meets up with the regulatory standards and that can compete anywhere in the world. The petroleum products consumed in Nigeria will never be allowed to enter the European Union, will never be allowed to enter the US, the US markets. That is to show you how bad it is. And the fact that we've allowed this for years, cheap petrol, cheap diesel, that has contributed to um, the, 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 the um, life cycle of engines and cars and um, the, the public health of Nigerians, and it, is, is, it points to the fact that the regulator has failed to do its job, which is to test these products at entry. Okay? So basically, the refinery has what they call the hydro treater. It's a, it's a, it's a distillation and cracking unit. Yeah? that is going to further treat and refine the products to the specific levels. And it's promised. I, I, to be honest with you, I believe Aliko Dangote more than I believe NNPCL. And I'll say it, I have always said it, and I'll say it here for, for the world to hear, I believe Aliko Dangote more than I believe NNPCL. If he says he's going to get it to 10 ppm for, for sulfur content, and he's going to get your research octane level and motor octane level to 93 to 95 ppm, he's going to do it. NMPC has been promising turnaround maintenance for four dead refineries since forever, and they've not been able to pull it off. And they spent 12 trillion naira so far. So who should we believe? All right. You're all right. Well, Kevin, thank you very much for joining us on the program this morning and enlightening our viewers on the um, ongoings at the Dangote refinery. Thank you so much indeed.